Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com Welcome to Rec Reviews. Movies and entertainment analysis using the latest in beer goggle technology. And here are your dubiously qualified hosts, Eric, Paul, and Christopher. Get a load of Christopher's dance moves. You guys are missing out who can't see it right now. Stupid radio. If only. If only. That's when we go to our multimedia platform. That's right. Welcome back to another episode. It is Thursday, April 21st, the day Prince passed away. Happy 421, everyone. <laughs> Happy 421. <laughs> he <laughs> made it one last day. Yeah, he, he hung in there. You think maybe it's, it's just too much? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. He went out on top? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I haven't heard anything about, you know, was the cause just he was kind of like, Sick a few days be- before they had to Air like land his pl- something, right? What's that? Didn't they like? Wasn't didn't he collapse on stage or something like that? And people are going to be yelling at their phones right now. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, he uh, he was on on his plane. And I think they had to make an emergency landing oh, a couple okay. of days Maybe before was he, he was sick. They look look something like a flu. I don't know that. I haven't seen any. I thought TMZ would have some dirt, but not nothing really. So v- very sad, iconic. A performer influenced a gazillion people. Uh, Eric was just lamenting that he never got to see him live. Yeah. I, I mean, haven't either. I'm not the hugest Prince fan, but, uh, I mean, everybody kind of likes Prince, right? Yeah. I mean, just, I guess, Doves Cry. I only got introduced to a couple of his songs. I mean, Lady Cab Driver. Great you know, song. we streamed him at work today uh, after we got the news, and then... Several songs came up. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is Prince. I forgot about that. Mm. So he's got a lot of those. I bet you you would recognize more if you actually sat down to listen to it. But yeah, it's a bummer, man. I would love to have seen him perform. Yeah, He's one of those guys I always admired for being – he just demanded that he was sexy. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody – if you just passed him on the street, it's not like you would give him two looks. But he just put it so much out there that he enforced it. He's yeah. like, you don't understand. I'm sexy. And everyone's like, oh, I guess he is. It's kind of like the Nicole Richie thing of the early 2000s. Or it's like, I don't remember. I know Adam Kroll always says, but I'm like, I don't remember signing off on this. I don't remember when <laughs> <laughs> deciding. I, yeah, I don't remember I agreeing think, to this. I think Nicole Richie is kind of hot. I, I like that you compared Prince to Nicole Richie. That's I, No, I get it. I, I, to, I totally get it. Yeah, I get it. Right. It's like, I don't remember. Yeah, I was signing off. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I guess, I guess he's hot. I, guess, I don't know I guess if I know who hot. Nicole Richie is. Oh, come on. You never watched The Simple Life? No. I had gay friends in high school, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the one with Paris Hilton, right? And she was you the mean other just girl. Friends? Right? But yeah, no. Oh, really. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just hands. Did you guys see the Onion Hand article <laughs> about pr- Prince today? Uh, no. About a bad. Oh, uh, I forget how it goes. It, it, was, it was pretty good. But uh, something about like Prince would want us all to fuck, but we're all too sad to do it or something like that. That's how we'd want to go out. Oh, that, that, his death should be celebrated by everyone just going at it? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like every death should be celebrated that way. That's why funerals are so disappointing to me. <laughs> never You're goes showing down. up the wrong way. Yeah, never goes down how I want it to go down. <laughs> I'm here for the orgy. Yeah. My condolences. I'm doing my pants and people are like, what the? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's too bad, though, is that David Bowie, we just got over that wave of, you know, the Rolling Stones special yeah. editions and all that. And now it's one more wave, you know. Yeah, everyone's dropping. Crazy year. Who's left? I mean. Bob Dylan's still trekking on. Bob, I was thinking about that. I, was, I hope Bob Dylan makes it. He's just he he's just got to go on. I didn't get to see him live yet either. I, I would like to, except every, everyone I talk to says it's it, it's the most horrible thing ever. But and, but it's just like you know, I got to see him before he dies. Bob Dylan, yeah, oh. very much like watching Kobe play this last this last <laughs> season, where it's like I got to see him, but man, he was breaking every shot. <laughs> Had to take him out and he put ice all over him. He got sixty points. Yeah, that was... Granted, they gave him the ball any chance they could. That was like a video game yeah. where you're playing a kid who's like, my favorite player is Kobe. And so, yeah, and everyone give him the ball. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to score 60. I don't care if we lose. <laughs> but, yeah. Wrecked Reviews, everybody. We're talking about movies and beer. And yes. Kobe. Speaking of which, uh, the I'm really happy. Eric, uh, me and Eric, this Monday went to a local brewery that is 
all gluten free, and it was actually really, really good. Even Eric, who is you know doesn't have a gluten issue, just I, I think yeah, I, I think you were pretty you were pretty impressed. Yeah, yeah, they make great beer. So uh. so t- today uh, in a weird reversal of roles, Christopher is drinking wine like a pussy. And I'm drinking beer like a real man. So the brewery is Duckfoot Brewery. It's uh, local to San Diego. And they make a, a ton of different beers, seasonal. They kind of rotate their uh, their beers all, all the time. Um, yeah, they have something for everybody there, I would say. And uh, r- really good. So right now I'm drinking a Choconut Lust uh, Porter. Haz- uh, chocolate Hazelnut Porter. Really good. Nice, dark, a little bitter kind of Guinnessy. Uh, Pretty good, so I'm I'm happy I finally get to drink a beer on this show. It's about time, Paul. I feel about like time. we should all have one person who's left-handed. One of us should be colorblind as well. I feel like in media, that's usually how it goes. Huh? No, I'm left-handed. There we go. So I, I got that covered. All right, so we got a gluten issue, left uh, hand. Uh, I'll go colorblind, and then we all... You go <laughs> work on that. Yeah. <laughs> so be, be, being left-handed is kind of like a disability? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> yeah, man. Every time I get reached for a doorknob, it's on the wrong side. What's up with that? That's true. Separate but equal, man. Separate but equal. Those they make those uh those stupid Samsung phones now with kind of like the the edge thing on the side, yeah. and it's always and it's only on the right side. It seems like it would exclude all the lefties. Uh, I think they they make them now with they're on both sides. Mm. But I don't I don't know why you need like an eighth of an inch of a screen on the side that, of your that, phone. That thing is dumb, and it seems like if if it takes it, how do you put a case on it where? Where you can protect it, like if it takes a if it takes a spill and the edge hits, you're probably done. No, I don't know. We should start reviewing technology stuff. Too. Nah. <laughs> start doing phone reviews. Phone reviews. I got a new phone too. I'm really happy with it. I, I had this uh, an aging a, aging phone that was driving me nuts, and finally started dying. And I got a, a new one that I'm actually happy with. I'm, I, I got I got gluten free beer. I got a I got a phone from like the current past couple of years that I'm not like. Four years behind the curve, I'm I'm, I'm, getting, I'm moving up in the world. Things are things are g- getting good. Well, now that you have a phone that works, there's a uh, an app called Untapped where you can uh, rank the beers that you drink. Ah, oh, sweet. I'm granted you can only drink like seven of them from this brewery. <laughs> that's it. You're, you're locked into this one brewery, but you can just keep putting another them. review on this beer. Well, I, I also discovered a local brewery, uh, uh, Culture Culture Brewery, and they have a lot of gluten reduced beers as well. Where you know. It's like 10 parts per million where I, I think I could get away with that's also really, really good, really delicious beers. So I'm back. Back in the game, baby. Back in the saddle. What, what are you drinking over there, Chris? I'm sipping on a terrible bottle of Unruly Zin. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's uh, part of the BevMo five-cent wine deal that they're going right. on where you buy the first and then you get the second for essentially free, but five cents. Oh, right. Well, you're well, off beer, right? You're You're done with beer for a while? Yeah, I'm trying to stay off beer for a little while just because I was like, that was my go-to thing, mm-hmm. and so, uh, yeah, I've been trying to move into wine, and there's a lot to explore there, but I'm still trying to get my palate. I mean, I read the back of the thing, you know, the back of the label, and then t- and look at reviews, and people are like, oh, there's notes of blueberry and, you know, a little earthy and this and that. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I think you, you inhale way too much, you know, bubblegum-flavored vape to taste anything <laughs> Other you, than strawberries and bananas. Do you smell it and like swish it around? And, I do, and then I'm like, it smells like pretty acidic. <laughs> you taste it and spit it back out. And, <laughs> Gargle and, it. Yeah. Yeah, going back to my gay friends. But, um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's okay, I guess. I don't know. I can, I'm almost to the point now where I can tell if it's a good wine or a bad wine. Just basic, just I like this or not. Before it was like, I don't, I don't know if I like it just because it's sugary or if it's actually a good wine, you know. And this is the first one where I'm like, no, I don't think I, I particularly enjoy it. But nonetheless, that won't stop me from drinking the bottle. So did Excellent. you get did you get two of the same kind or the other one was something else? Nope, two of the same kind. So I think double I, down. Right. I doubled down today watching the movies that we reviewed and then brought the second one in so that we can uh, we can be so you can be wrecked. in the right uh, taste palette. The- for yeah, the whole experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I can keep the same thing. It's sensory memory. <laughs> so to me, watching. hardcore Henry had some notes of blueberry and toasted oak. Mm, I would say so. If uh, ru- you know Russian oak, I would guess mm-hmm. Russian, <laughs> Russian, uh, <laughs> Russian turds. <laughs> well, uh, real quickly, I would like to pimp a uh, second chance uh, beer company, which I didn't know they canned until like today, and I saw this on the shelf, so I picked it up. So it's their uh, seize the IPA because I'm a big IPA guy, but 
I really like Second Chance. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of going there yet, but I've had a couple of their beers, and they've all been really good. So they're uh, again local, San Diego. Yeah, we got a lot of really cool breweries around here. It's like, yeah, we're spoiled. It's nice. surprising how people always say that you know we're the beer capital. Like this is a big beer hub, and at is first it, I was like, okay, but San Diego, it's like two hundred something. Wow, is it because it's, it's is it because there's so many white people here? Is that why? That's precisely why. Really, that's why Portland is another big one. Yeah, <laughs> <I figured. laughs> so and Denver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Boulder outside of Denver, but yeah, it's like 90 percent white there. Breweries so. and fixie bikes. That's what <laughs> that's what life's all about. Yeah. <laughs> truly, truly. But right. uh, b- before we get, I know, I know we're, I know we we need to talk about movies real quick. But I have I have a rant that I w- would like to share just real quick. All right, all right. I was at uh, my local pub a couple of nights ago, and proper uh, British pub. I was O'Brien's. It's a it's a craft beer bar. Okay. Even though it ha- it has like a British name, but you can probably well, Irish, right? Irish. Yeah, I'm mean, Irish. Yeah, sorry, I'm. I'm Irish I'm a, lad. I'm a dumb American. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> dumb American lad. Yeah, yeah, duft cunt. So <laughs> the first time we dropped the cunt. <laughs> <laughs> really, it can't be the first. No, no I, think, I guess I think it, that's it, it is. Yeah. But it was with an accent, so it's okay. Yeah, it was an accent. You were role playing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yes. you didn't actually say it. It's was, fair use. You were in character. <laughs> that was the script. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I'm sitting there, you know, drinking uh, a nice beer there, and um, this table next to me, I overhear them talking about movies. And I think it was like two couples. It was like two guys and two girls or whatever. And I, I feel like this guy was trying to impress them. And he was talking about how he knew about this stuff of movies. And he was talking about Quentin Tarantino flicks, which I'm actually not a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. But Ooh. I have heard of the uh, Everything Happens in the Same Universe. All of his movies happen within the same universe. And that's like like this ultra-violent alternate history. And that's why his movies are as violent as they are. Oh, man, that's so cool if that's true. Yeah, like I think he's actually he came out and said that that's true, which this is what the guy was talking about. So he was like, "Yeah, it's like all these happen in the same universe." So that means John Travolta in Pulp Fiction can go watch the Kill Bill movies. It's like, no, that's not no, what no, it that's is. not how it works. <laughs> it's like, it's like you're that's an idiot. This that's, universe, yeah, yeah, that's, that, yeah. You're that's yeah, exactly. It's like no, they don't sit down to watch the movies. It's like it's it's ha- it's concurrent in the same. That always brings show. up the quandary though of. Uh, what if John Travolta goes and watches Saturday Night Fever? Are people is there a different actor in that or something, or is he watching himself? You know, I don't know. It's one of those things. So it's kind of the same thing where if he watches Kill Bill, where it's like it's a universe collapsing within itself. Yeah, the, that's string theory, whatever the multiverse. Yeah, where theory. it's like uh, okay. Every time John Travolta sees one of his own movies, another multiverse happens. Yeah, or I guess it's more appropriate when they have like Entourage and they have all these celebrity cameos. You know, yeah. and then you have it's like okay, well, if that's Bruce Willis playing Bruce Willis, if they watch Die Hard, does that not exist? Or if they reference Die Hard, oh, yeah. like, oh yeah. it's that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know how he blew this uh, whole uh, everything's in the same universe line. But it's like, man, dude, <laughs> uh, that <laughs> just totally ruined yeah. your, so, you know, somewhat trying to be you know thought thoughtful uh, mm-hmm. argument. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Like I heard that, I'm just like, man, this guy does not get it whatsoever. Well, that doesn't make – okay, so but Quentin Tarantino, it's like how much of universe are you really building there? You know, is there like going to be – the extent of universe building that's most interesting is like Easter egg kind of stuff where you see brands like we talked about yeah, last I, week. Yeah, I think with, it, that's about basically all it that's is. That's it because, I mean, Jackie Brown doesn't take – that would be the only one like that and Reservoir Dogs. Well, he didn't actually write that one. He didn't? He yeah, just directed so, uh, it? Yeah, he just directed it. So I think Jackie Brown is probably outside of all this. So it's just Jackie Brown. So what are there's brands? There's like unifying brands. Well, oh, I, I, I don't movies? know. Well, that's I, what I'm saying. Know, that's the only way. I, I don't think there's really anything unifying that I picked up. I on. think there's like if you if you go to the internet, the mm-hmm. internet will tell you all the commonalities between the movies and, okay. and how they're together. I haven't picked up. But the, the only unifying thing I've picked up on is they all seem to deal with revenge. Yeah. And, it's, and Samuel you know, Jackson is in all of them. Yeah. Samuel Jackson and Revenge gives you carte blanche. What to if Samuel Jackson goes to the theater and watches himself? In, 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 this, in, the, in this universe? <laughs> <laughs> no, in the universe this guy created about Quentin Tarantino movies. He, is he, he is Snakes a, on a Plane in that part of that universe? God, I hope I not. I hope not. Yeah. I really that, hope that's not. a world, a universe without Snakes on a Plane might be <laughs> the one I want to live in. <laughs> Glorious bastards. I've had it with these motherfucking Nazis in this. On the fucking theater. 
But anyways, we should probably get to reviews. We have two on the plate here. Yeah. Oh, I'm just seeing on Quintet. That we're, we're procrastinating, jumping, jumping into these because we're afraid we have nothing to say. <laughs> it's been it's been a little light on movies that we all, I think, feel very enthusiastic about going to go see. Yeah, we'd have to get into more independent stuff or go into the Netflix realm, which we haven't really broken into on the show yet. Which yeah. I'm all for that. Yeah. We, we have to now. We, we, might, we might need to. Because I think, like, the next two weeks is kind of rough as well. I'm not seeing the Huntsman. Uh, I like that. <laughs> I kind of want to see. I don't know. I feel like it's another one of these kind of similar to. I know it's the same exact genre, almost the same exact story. But when they did Maleficent, I feel like it's kind of this. Um, what was that fairy? Uh, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit when you said that Maleficent. <laughs> what was the uh, Wizard of Oz thing that like that uh, play? Oh. Wicked. I feel like it's all kind of in that same thing where it's for tween girls, where they're like, oh, it's a powerful female, whatever. It's tween girls and gay guys, I feel like, where it's yeah. like, oh, there's this really wicked queen, and she's acting so fierce and stuff like that. It's like, oh, that's pretty Didn't cool. Didn't they make a sequel to Wizard of Oz? Didn't Sam Raimi direct something? Uh, the Wiz like is actually not a sequel. It's just... The Wiz? <laughs> it's actually not in the same universe. <laughs> no, but wasn't, wasn't they, there they one? They had one a couple years ago yeah. with, with What's-His-Face. Uh... Mila Kunis was in it, right? Didn't she play like, the Wicked Witch? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see it, but <laughs> uh, one hundred eighty-seven hours. What's a guy? Oh, James Franco. James Franco was in it. Oh, he plays. Yeah, he plays the uh, the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. So it was a prequel, I guess. I actually I didn't, Tino, I didn't Tino made me sit through that oh, movie. Oh. Tino's <laughs> such a poor he, friend. Some, I know. Sometimes he drags me to the worst freaking movies ever, and some, I'll, I'll try and drag like drag him to like some serious movies, and he hates it. Like yeah. he. I uh, I room with them. I know. <laughs> I may, I, uh, I dragged them to uh, Ex Machina, and he fell asleep in it. I I thought it was one of the greatest movies this year. Yeah. Ex Machina. Yeah, fantastic. I'm jealous because I really want to see it. I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet? No, I, oh, I want to. And let's, I let's not spoil anything. Yeah, and I've kind of kept away from spoilers from that one. Not too many. I mean, kind of spoilers, but not like you know, huge twists in it but just to really it's one of those movies that's so well done you know that you're just okay. in it and it, for what it does especially with the um special effects for being mm-hmm. low budget it's like we're in that day and age where it was you know quote unquote low budget but yeah won an oscar because it's of seem- how great it seamless looked. yeah it's like uh have you seen sunshine yeah man like the first two thirds of that movie are awesome and, and then it, it just goes to shit it goes to What's shit it about? uh it's about like the sun is dying and it's sci-fi, and it's like the spaceship goes to uh, re- reignite the sun, I guess, with uh, the sun. A nuclear like, payload. They're going to just blow up a it's, nuke it's inside like, it's, it's like the plot of Armageddon. Uh, it's like the plot of Core oh. <laughs> or whatever. Or Armageddon, <laughs> sure, but in space. But uh, what they do with their – because it has a small budget, but what they did with that movie was – I mean, it looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's one so. of kind of like to throw it back to last week with Cloverfield Lane, where it's like you can do a lot with a little if you yeah. just make it so. You have a good focused. director. Yeah. Right? Or, and, yeah. Yeah, and just create tension or at least create characters. That's, you know, with any movie to make it really better, you have to have characters you really care about. And mm-hmm. then from there, if you just have good special effects overlaying onto it, so it's not Michael Bay where it's that's front right. and center, you know. Yeah, like uh, uh, Ex Machina is essentially just three people in that whole movie. There's very little set you're basically in the same house the whole the whole time there's three people but you're never bored no and they do they're clever with it because they do even acknowledge some places you think it might be going and they have scenes to kind of you know either um, acknowledge or shoot them down which is very i like that in movies where they are aware of the audience now is to a certain level we're expecting things to go a certain place I'm trying to be as vague as possible. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> I appreciate that. A certain place for something I've that seen, might or might not. I've seen the movie and I have no fucking idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess when he's looking in but the mirror, yeah, that part. All right. Well, I, I will. I will make oh, a point. Okay, now I get it. I will make it a point to see this. Definitely, you're missing out in the in the near well, future. I feel so bad because that both those guys now are in everything. I mean, we're just talking with our program, our station manager, about Star Wars and. Poe, the fighter pilot, is Oscar Isaac, who is now in everything I love him. Inside Lewin Davis. Inside Lewin Davis. I just yeah. saw that recently. Absolutely loved it. And then the yeah. red-haired guy who was the right-hand man of uh, Kylo Ren. Oh, yeah, that dude's in everything. And That's, now he's yeah. in everything, yeah. And rightfully so. I mean, he was great in, uh, what was it, The Revenant? As, yeah, uh, he's in as The Revenant. Captain. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, so both of those he's dudes are He's in Brooklyn. 
Did you guys see Brooklyn? <laughs> no. I did see Brooklyn. Okay, I saw Brooklyn too. That was a movie about... Because we both have girlfriends, yeah. yeah. That's, that's why we saw it. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was... I love that someone put... I forget where it's from, but that was a movie about a girl almost having problems. Like, <laughs> she almost kind of had a hard immigrant experience, but she got a boyfriend, and that's the story yeah, of the movie. Yeah. Is you get a boyfriend, then everything's fine. That movie could have been cool. It was like cool. I could I could have been into it, but yeah, it yeah. was well done enough to where it kind of like didn't slow down too much. It was clever enough to where it was funny where it had to be, but the ending where she like the hard and quote the hard decision she had to make. It's when so you're stupid. Like, okay, so like, spoiler yeah. alert at the end. <laughs> spoiler for Brooklyn. <laughs> spoiler, spoiler, spoiler for Brooklyn for everyone who's the out there. The title is the spoiler. Yeah. Okay. So she goes back. She basically marries she does marry a dude and then she goes back to ireland because her mom dies and she goes back there and meets the her dude from sister Ex dies. sister sister dies yeah. yeah and her mom's left all alone very heart-wrenching i'm into it at this point and then she meets this like really strapping well not strapping but handsome it's the dude that we were talking about from ex machina that dude is a rich irish guy she goes back there and is kind of almost dating him like they're dating but not doing anything about it but it's kind of implied that he's yeah. like look I've got all this money and no one to spend it on. I don't have a wife, so... And she's, like, thinking about it. And then she gets caught. Somebody's like, hey, I heard that you got married back in Brooklyn. She's like, I can't do this. I'm not, you know, this is a hard decision where she's like, I can't do this. I've been lying. I'm going to do the right thing and tell you guys. It's like... This takes place in the 40s, right? Yeah. Yeah, so let's preface that. Maybe the 20s, I think. Was it the 20s? 20s or... I thought it was the 40s. Okay. I I don't... Yeah, At that point, It, it doesn't matter as long as it's not the 50s. Great. I mean, women definitely had a different role then than they do now. So yeah. that, that's why some of this might sound weird. They but, knew but, their uh, place back then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Rightfully Jesus so, that movie. Christ. I was fist bumping the whole time against slapped. <laughs> but she gets caught, and then she's like, acts like she's all, you know, moral at that point and being like, hey, I'm married. I can't do this. It's like, you were about to, but you just got caught. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, like, she, like, when she was back in Ireland, she was, like, struggling with this decision, like, like, do I stay true to my marriage or do I talk? It's like, you're married. Just All you have to do is just say I'm married. That's I got all you ma- have to do. Yeah, and then she gets caught. It's not like she's yeah. like, no, and he goes to kiss her or something. She's like, no, she literally is all down for it. And then she gets caught and then she's like, you know what? I'm better than this. It's like, bitch, you had no other option. <laughs> you were about to be busted. So how are you going to act yeah. like you're all holier than thou? So she goes back to Brooklyn. And the movie's called Brooklyn. So obviously you knew she was going to go back all along. So I never put that together. No, well, it was called Brooklyn, so I, I thought it was pretty obvious. I'm like, I was wondering why it was called. You two just bored the shit out of me. Well, it was, it was great. It was pretty funny. I they, don't, yeah, sorry. We're, they call outfits costumes. All right, let's, let's talk about uh, let's talk about hardcore Henry. Let's all right. Let's so get on with this. First up, and we're on like twenty minutes in. So <laughs> well, good because hardcore Henry will take. Uh, I liked it more than I feel like I was kind of reading right. the room on you guys. I liked it. We should come clean. At least I'm going to come clean. Oh no, I'm going to come even cleaner because. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I felt bad. Like I did. I, I didn't want to see this movie, so I went to the internet and found a cam. So I did not see this in theater. May or may not have found a cam. Don't sue us. <laughs> Allegedly, I have to come even cleaner. I did the same thing, except I only made it through ten minutes of it. I. Well, it, it I'm was, glad we're doing a movie podcast, you assholes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I saw. We're going to do Jungle Book. We're going to do I, Jungle I saw, Book too. I saw that in 3D in the theater. That's right. Okay, good. So that I, makes I up went, for I, it. I went all the way on that one. He went all the way with blue. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. Like, All right, so let's begin. All right, so let's not do what we did Henry. last time and say whether we liked it or not, first off, like I just did. Let's begin, preface it. The whole thing about this movie is it's all in first person. Right. That's its, that's its, um, that's gimmick. its, it's a gimmick. It's a, it's a total gimmick, but yeah. That's its reason for existing or getting any recognition. If you like video games, specifically first person shooters, this is probably a movie for you. Oh, I would and if how? You- if you like first-person shooters but like having absolutely no control over the first-person shooter, this is the movie for you. Yeah. If so you like to watch other people play first-person shooters, this is, this is up the movie. your alley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it kind of has a good good enough setup. I mean, the gimmick in the first 10 minutes, I feel like once you make it past that point, you're in. You know, you can you adjust. You can adjust to it because at first it's so jarring. I didn't make it. Yeah, that's the thing is it's so jarring and you're trying to see what's going on and you're used to as a viewer seeing the action in such a perfectly framed way that you can really appreciate it. Whereas this one, it's going so fast that you really can't see what's going on for the most part. You just see a lot of shooting happening. There was so much bloodshed in this movie. There was, yeah, it definitely earned it is rated R rating for sure. But, okay, I'm sure every other review out there on this movie has the same thing, but I'm going to say it's just like these guys just said. It is a video game, but not only just because of the first-person aspect of it, 
but they literally have levels where it's like the sniping at some point they're sniping from the roof <laughs> and they go okay so they're sniping and you're seeing the guy down there and you have, and he's escorting him essentially and he's doing damage down you know on the ground floor and the guy says to him literally looks over and goes you don't need that sniper anymore we're going inside <laughs> it's just like straight out of a video game like okay yeah. done with that section if only there was like a loading screen somewhere or like if you if you die and then you start over if they would have done that that would have been a little clever that would have been and they do kind of do a little bit in that realm of dying and starting over and not quite so. They, they should have done Edge of Tomorrow with first person. I was person. just about to say. Yeah. <laughs> they, because that's the thing. This movie could have been a lot more if they did do a little bit more in the sci fi era with it. They had kind of a, a baseline story that kind of got a little interesting at the end, but it was so weird. I mean, and not really. The, fr- the thing front and center is just the first person aspect of it. I mean, the movie doesn't really stand up. Much else besides that, which it really doesn't have to. Uh, did, you, did you finish it, Eric? Or I did not. No. You did not. Does it go anywhere? Does it like? Okay, so he wakes up in the thing. Yeah. yeah. He wakes up basically, and he's getting introduced. It's just like a video game where they're like, "Move your right hand." Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm your wife, and so he wakes up to his <laughs> wife. She gets taken, and then from there on, he's running to try and save his wife, which is. I, I good. do kind of like how he can't talk, and I assume does not talk. Throughout the the rest of the movie, no, because the speech have, thing is, and right. they have like some like throwaway line. About, wait, wait, oh, you let, can't let, talk. Yeah, let, let me take a guess. He says one thing somewhere at no. the end of the movie, and it's "I love you." No, no, no. no. Oh, come on! His <laughs> wife was. You could tell at the beginning <laughs> of that thing. His wife is not his wife. I did not. Once again, I'm the dumb viewer. <laughs> I'm the basic <laughs> all American. I uh, see nothing coming. <laughs> okay, for, for that setup, I'm like, all right, she's evil. Like she's going to turn on on you at some point. Then oh. she does. Oh, she does? I, okay. just, I didn't see that coming in the first 10 minutes that I, I saw. I didn't either. Oh. It goes a little bit. So he... I've played a lot of first person video <laughs> games, fairly. I was so. like, she's pretty. She can't be evil. That's why you put him in a good hardcore Henry. <laughs> hardcore Paul. You are, you are the target audience for this, Paul. Uh, per, yeah. And I should have liked it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you, you blew it. You should I have. blew it. I imagine the theater experience is significantly yeah, better, yeah, especially yeah. for this film. So yeah. I feel kind of bad. Like, I don't, I don't want to... I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say like too too many negative things about it just because I did not experience this the way that I should, and I will probably give this a go once it comes out on. Uh, Does 3D. this uh, did, for reals? Can you watch this in three D? No. no, no. That would be oh, that would have been that, cool. that would be cool. If I you're gonna like make it. a first person shooter oh. like that, make it three D. Sounds like a nightmare because it's already like <laughs> jittery. Like it's all like. Oh, GoPro true. cam all over the place. I don't know if I true. want to. See it does. That 3D. It does have Charlito Copley in it, who I know you guys don't like. No, I love that guy. He's, oh. I was actually going to talk about that because he's like one of my like favorite current actors. Like him and Sam Rockwell. Yep, are up there for me. Yeah, he's so, one of those guys where I'm very happy to see him in a movie. I will bring it up once again. And, he is the uh, opposite of Mila Kunis. The couple of scenes that I saw with him, he was having a great old time. Like you could tell. Oh, he was. He was chewing up the scenery, but it, like mm-hmm. I mean, it's a first person shooter video game, which happens all the time in those. So it, it kind of worked on that level i thought oh beautiful and i love that dude so. yeah and a good enough story with him he basically is playing a bunch of di- okay we're gonna spoil here we go yeah yeah it's <laughs> okay fine. so he's playing a bunch of different roles and it's kind of at first he dies within like the first five yeah minutes like i thought he was just a cameo and i got really sad but Me i saw too. that i'm like oh you brought him on and you just shot him in the face yeah so yeah. he dies very quickly because they're just going you know full sprint right out of the thing there's so many guys in the movie throw away henchmen he's killing mm-hmm. like Hundreds of people throughout this thing. So, uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess they're clones, right? That was that was that was my guess. Was that it? Because oh, I, I, I guess I didn't see the end. At the I, end, there was clones that okay. they were, there was a super soldier. So basically, Hardcore Henry is like one of a super soldier thing where they're trying to breed these super soldiers, and it's okay. kind of it's, it's creepy that Eric figures more shit out having only seen half of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea, and then I had to go on well, Wikipedia I mean, to confirm. No, it. <laughs> this seemed like a pretty basic like. I don't know. Like I said, it's a it's a video game. Yeah. Movie. Is it like I said, once again, is a video game. They have the sniping level, they have the motorcycle level. Yeah. They have a chase level. They have, you know, a lot of fighting, a lot a lot of shooting. Um and they have the the Charlotte Copley basically. Okay. They make no bones about it. He literally pu- pulls out a phone and just or Hardcore Henry, you you pulls out a phone and it's just a map, a point on the map and he just goes Okay, I need you to go here and collect this, and then you spend twenty <laughs> oh minutes. God. And he goes there and he collects. <laughs> oh he fights, God. fights a bunch of dudes. He gets whatever you know thing because he's a robot, and so he collects whatever he needs. And then Charlito shows up for a little bit, does acts his ass off, and then he goes. They break into another fight. And he's like, okay, and then you get knocked out or something. He's like, okay, go here, and then you spend ten more minutes to go there. And it is like I said, it's a straight up video game, but 
they say that about Michael Bay movies and stuff like that. This is literally a video game movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is good. We, uh, so, <laughs> it's good. It was so. So the cool thing about uh, first-person shooters and especially uh, games lo- like Grand Theft Auto is that it's like a movie experience that's a that, that you can. Person. Huh? That's the third person. Game. Third. Uh, he doesn't represent us. Yeah, yeah. There is a first person mod, but I know. <laughs> well, I know that's well, what Paul's no, talking no, no. about. I'm just, I, I'm no, just no, giving I'm, you shit. Sorry. No, I, I don't mean that it's it's a first person shooter. I mean that what it attempts to do is uh, make a video game like a movie, but where you can essentially control the plot, where you can take it in whatever yeah. direction you you want to go. This does the opposite, which seems like just terrible. It's it's taking kind We've of a, a movie and narrows it into. We've gone full circle. Like, yeah, video games used to ape movies. Yeah, and now movies are aping video games. Yeah, but it's cool though because it's like watching a person play the perfect video game instead of dying and like running into yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like this is literally, and it's cool for what it tries to do. Like, this is what an action movie star would be seeing, kind of thing. But you get it's pretty exhausting once you get to the end. Fifteen minutes of it, I think, would have been good. I don't know if it's yeah, like cool. yeah, like this. The guy who made this movie. Uh, did a I think a twenty or thirty minute like short film mm. that you can watch on YouTube, which seems like a pretty good length for this yeah. sort of thing. Like yeah. I, I'd, I'm curious to see if this holds up for ninety minutes because like, I was getting tired. Like this has a lot of cool stunt work in it, and um, I feel like you would appreciate that more if you were not from the first person perspective. Like if I could, like if the camera was set back and you're watching all this cool stuff happen, you would be able to appreciate it more and be like even more wowed than from, I mean, I get it. It's unique. Maybe just part of the movie from this perspective, but then I don't know. Yeah. That's the thing is it does feel like a music video for the first 10 minutes. Cause that's what you're used to. And then once it gets, they do a good job, a good enough job of breaking it up with Charlito where he comes in and does his, some acting. And even towards the end, they do interesting things with this character because, like I said, he dies within the first five minutes, and you kind of see why that is. There's so many versions of him. Right. Um, and so they do an interesting kind of little, like, dance number almost with him at some point. They do have comedy, but it's not comedy with dialogue or anything like that. It's mostly, like, it gets quiet, and then, you know, the elevator music's playing just after a huge fight or something mm-hmm. like the equivalent of that where it's right. like, oh, the juxtaposition to put out a 50 cent word right there. Did you ever get like nauseous at all watching it? Watching it on my computer? I mean, may or may not have. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> all right. No, I was okay with it just because. And I watched Hardcore Henry, I watch in 20 minute increments whenever okay. I got a chance. Jungle Book, I watch all this way straight through. Um, Hardcore Henry, I had time to digest it. And maybe that's why I enjoyed it more because in 20 minute increments, mm, yeah, it was great. I went to the it. next, yeah, action scene. They got to a quiet part and then I stopped and then picked it up somewhere else. And, you know, good enough uh, twist at the end. You know, Eric guessed it from the first 30 seconds, apparently, that the girl ends up being bad. The guy ends up, the guy has telekinesis powers, not hardcore, but the main antagonist, which is never explained. The albino, yeah. Jared. Who, yeah. Well, no looking dude. Which on my may or may not have watched Cam version, I couldn't really tell. I, I was I, like, I, is that Charlito? For, for, <laughs> for a second, I thought it was Crispin Glover. Yeah, I can get that too. With the you know the bl- blurry blurry oh, that would so that cool if it was Crispin yes Is that oh, dude did anything recently he was, was just that? on a podcast on the Adam Carolla show oh is, was he yeah okay. weird. he's a very artsy dude he's doing like a one man show and all that kind of stuff but yeah that dude's crazy we'll have to do the Charlie's Angels podcast <laughs> for Charlie's <laughs> Angels episode next time <laughs> in the meantime but yeah overall Hardcore Henry good enough good enough twist at the end a little bit sci fi but didn't quite go far enough with it and they even tried to put in there's a Tim Roth cameo in this yeah really? he calls you a pussy at the very beginning of the movie <laughs> <laughs> this is a great way to start it yeah. <laughs> tim roth starts out calling you a pussy which i wish most movies would start that way <laughs> or at least most days i knew that was my the jungle block. book should have started that way <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that, wait 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 that was tim roth <laughs> that was tim roth yeah. I, I didn't miss, know how did i miss that i didn't know until i went on wikipedia <laughs> I, I think i was trying to kind of like watch it and, and do computer work at the same time so i i, I must have just missed it yeah. that movie's so jarring you can miss a lot of things if you don't Really pay attention. I mean, yeah. so <laughs> I will not give this movie judgment until I see it in a proper format. But. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and it's one of those things where I really wish it, it was it not like a good. You're pretty date positive movie. on it, so you would probably watch it. Yeah. Did, did you like it overall? You seem like you I kinda did. I did like it. Like I didn't think about it until Paul said, but 3D that would have been great. That would have been. I mean, go full. Did you like it more or less than Jurassic World? 
plus. Okay. But I fucking love Jurassic World, so <laughs> let that just be. I just wanted to remind our listeners that not many you people, like Jurassic World. So, so, don't like. I fucking love th- Jurassic this, World. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of dubiously qualified. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jurassic World. I was just thinking about that when our station manager was talking about Star Wars. <laughs> I was like, that's another blockbuster that I loved. <laughs> <laughs> but not as much as Lost World. Anyways, so Hardcore Henry, now good date movie, so I couldn't give it my money because I'm not going to go to a theater just to see right. this one by myself unless it's like a matinee or something like that. I really wish I could have had a budget of $2 million. It made $10 million, so hey, it's a win. That's good. Was Apparently, it kickstarted? I heard it was like kickstarted. Indiegogo. Indiegogo? Okay. Yeah, a little bit. So That's, that's fascinating. Like that, that whole people funding movies thing is crazy. I just saw another one just to go. Do you get to go see it free if you kickstart it? Hey, I'm sure they send you a copy of it when it comes out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they send you a copy. Like you had to buy it twice. I mean, hopefully, in their minds, I'm assuming. <laughs> I, I assume that they'll give you a DVD of it if you put in money, or maybe just the download link. It's probably not worth yeah. it for them to make DVDs. But they but, but they, they'll they'll do gifts a lot of times. These crowdfunding things, so probably a, a link to the video or maybe tickets to whatever comes theater. out. Yeah. And yeah. as a baller, you can put in like a thousand dollars and go to the premiere or something like that. Yeah, know, if you want to do it like that. But be a r- Russian hitchman. In the movie and get so, shot in the face. So <laughs> many Russian henchmen needlessly murdered. Yeah. <laughs> and brutally. I'm talking. Talk about stereotypes. This movie. Wow. It, it's, was it's it made by, by a Russian guy? It seemed like uh, in the credits there was a lot of Russian names. I think the main guy was like Vitor or something yeah. like that. Um, so, I, yeah. I mean, I would not be surprised. It, the whole thing was Russian except for Charlito and Tim Roth, who That's clearly didn't seemed, have to be there for more than five like. minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I quickly mentioned like stereotypes, but. It is a first-person shooter movie, so that kind of makes sense because yeah. video games play up that shit too. So yeah, I mean, I'm not it, trying to get this movie shit for that. Yeah, and it it didn't quite go. It it, it was what it, it did a good job being what it was. It was a good B action movie, but really good. And it had a gimmick, so it kind of gave it something new to it. But if it was just a straight-up movie on its own, I don't know if it would have stood up to it. It would have been like Crank. Yeah, Even it Crank, reminded me a lot of Crank. Crank was a little bit more of like a like almost a joke on the action movie, right? I mean, it had a little bit tongue in cheek kind of. To yeah, it this movie was. I don't know. I kind of wish it was maybe a little tongue in cheek. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was missing that. It was more tongue in cheek about being. I don't know if they even meant it though, because there's literally some points where he's like, "I mean, you got like a cyber arm and shit." Yeah, and he's like, at some point he's like, "Try the grenade. If you can't see them, use a grenade to blow them up." Like it is literally a training yeah. level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, what the did hell? Sh- did Shark see it? Is anybody know? We, we should have mentioned sharks not yet. Yeah, oh, sharks yeah, not the here. dark shark. <laughs> he, said, he said he might call in at some point. Well, that's so good we'll for see. us. If you're out there, shark, give us a holler. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear what you if you saw this or what you thought. Uh, I'm assuming he didn't like uh, uh, I don't think he's seen uh, – I did his show last night. I don't think he's seen – he, he has seen The Jungle Book. Okay. I think he hasn't seen Hardcore Henry. Well, should we uh, transition yeah, on? Since, yeah, we – Wait, wait, quick side thing. Have either of you guys seen Anna, Anna Melissa? Anomalisa? Uh-uh. Okay, no. never mind. That was another crowdfunded thing. It's a Charlie Kaufman movie that I just saw with puppets that I strongly oh. suggest that you guys see between now and our next show. Oh, okay. Fucking puppets like Team America puppets? Oh, or, or like Muppets puppets? Is it puppets? online to watch? Or yeah. Or like in theaters? Yeah, I'll give you the link after this where okay. you can watch it online and it's great. Okay. It's great, I like, but I like weird. Charlie Kaufman, so it's, I'm down for that. It's like stop motion puppets kind of know. like in between those two things. But another one of these crowdfunded things where it's pretty crazy. And you guys, if you like seeing puppets go down on each other. Team America. Yep. Then you're going to love this movie. <laughs> I watch that every night. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, without Do you fail. puppeteer them yourself? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I have to like, I have to get in the mindset to go to sleep. That's how, that helps get me there. <laughs> <laughs> it relaxes the nerves. Yeah. yeah. But uh, all right. Jungle Book. So I know Woo, two of us saw budget. this in the theater. Yeah, me and Eric went on a matinee date on a yeah. Sunday morning and Absolutely. saw it in 3D. And saw it in 3D because that was the only viewing because everything else was sold out. I can't believe this movie. Yeah. Sold out. Freaking sold out. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know it was going to be a big deal. I actually really liked it in 3D. I, I thought the 3D was very it was cool. It right. Yeah. I didn't, not, I, didn't, not, I didn't hate it. Yeah. It, it wasn't like in your – like you were saying, it wasn't like in your face like things jumping at you in yeah, 3D. Yeah, it, it had all the death stuff. Yeah. Kinda like Avatar, which we'll, maybe we'll get to that here in a little bit. But, um, uh, yeah, John Favreau. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, he, uh, 
Okay, he directed Shame, this movie, but shameless, he, shameless self promotion. Yeah, but he also introduces the movie to you when you go see this in the theater. I'm John Favreau, the director of the Jungle Book, directed by John Favreau. Yeah, he's like, I love the cartoon, so I made this movie. I, I, I <laughs> think I, I, see it. I think I saw him like ten times in the credits. It's no no missing. Yeah, he's him in also there. Uh, he also does an animal voice in the movie. So uh, who, John, who is John he? Favreau, uh, I think he was the pork. Was maybe I don't know. I forget which uh-huh. one he was. He wasn't one of the main ones. Right, right. Yeah, there's but, but so still. many random names that, or random characters that talk. That I'm like, oh, I wonder so, if that was like you know a lot of big stars in there. Louis C.K. or something like that. You know. So uh, one thing that generally drives me crazy is when like super famous people do voices in cartoons. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But for I gotta say for the most part, this movie on that front worked for me. Uh Scarlett Johansson didn't. Yeah. And also Ka, I think, in the book is supposed to be a male snake, not a female snake. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, whatever. But um <laughs> Bill Bill Murray not canon, man. <laughs> like like uh Bill Murray's voice super distinct. Yeah. And it, I thought it I thought he worked for Baloo. Like, it didn't bother me that I was listening to Bill Murray. Yeah. I Exact same criticism, Eric, although on it, the it other end. It for you? I, it did. It took me out to the extent that it was just listening to a voiceover of this person. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, it seemed like yeah. the kid, I could almost add that. You could moment, picture him in the studio in front of a mic, right? And just see the kid acting with, like, no green, with a green screen in front of him. And then yeah. Bill Murray and some other, you know, in Santa Monica doing his <laughs> voiceover work. Um, I did like Scarlett Johansson a lot. Just okay. because I, I like her voice. I think she's got a good, I mean, from her or whatever. She did great in her. Like, she didn't bother me at all in her. Yeah. But for some reason, like, her as a snake did not do it for me. I don't think any of them really as any of the characters. I mean. Christopher Walken as King Louis. We're going that? to, I'm going to play that on the, uh, I'm going to bring the mic down so you guys can hear my main criticism. That's coming up. Ben oh. Kingsley. Ben Kingsley's good just because, okay, Ben Kingsley or like Robin Williams back in the day. For some reason, just worked. Or Martin. I couldn't. I could not place Ben Kingsley. Like I, I mean, he me and Paul a, kept going back and forth. Like who the was fuck B- is that? Bagheera. He was who, a Puma. Who, the Puma. Yeah. Puma. Yeah. Yeah. They all Akira. No, Akira was but, the one that died. Yeah, that's the wolf, right? Yeah, that's Akira. the wolf. I have no idea who that was. The Jungle Book, I gotta say, is one of, like was my favorite when I was a kid. The actual book, not not like the Disney cartoon. Like, oh, okay. The book. There was a book. Really, yeah. really, Christopher. Really? I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> I know there's, the, there's like 18 <laughs> adaptions of this. Rudyard Kipling, movie, yeah. The Jungle Book. Yeah, it's a book. My God. Disney does not actually own the rights. To yes. D- Disney. So that's why there's I, another I, Jungle yeah, Book. Yeah, I, one, yeah. I, I hate to break uh, it to you, Christopher. All these Disney stories are not, they didn't make these up. They just all stole them from like the Brothers Grimm. Yeah, most of them are actually darker than what Disney shows. Yeah, yeah. You you guys know, yeah, the Grimm stuff is super dark. Yeah, and Pinocchio, he gets hanged at the end. <laughs> <laughs> he is hanged. Pinocchio is hanged? P- Pinocchio gets, I don't know if it's hung, I always want to say hung, but he gets hung by the neck to death uh-huh. <laughs> at the end of Pinocchio in the I original version of Jiminy Cricket gets beat up by a bat. Wow. All right. Wow. That's yeah. dark. <laughs> they are dark. <laughs> <laughs> they did a house Stuff You Should Know episode on that. <laughs> so, yeah, the Jungle Book is actually a book. Okay, and that's why there's, okay, that makes sense because there's an Andy Circus one coming out yeah. next year because they were all this news saying, like, oh, they're pushing the Jungle Book. Is that like, one, are you kidding me? Is that one live action? <laughs> uh, it's Andy Circus, so I assume it's all 3D. It's got to be whatever he does. You know, he only does that niche thing. Yeah. Where so, he's just acting well, with balls on his yeah. face. My big criticism of this movie is well, I feel bad for saying this, but the kid is oh, terrible. Oh, you're an asshole, man. <laughs> he's <is> terrible. <laughs> I know, I feel bad, but, like, I'm sorry, he's, well, he's not good. Let's put you in a room surrounded by, oh, like, four I would, green walls I would and be just ter- use your imagination. Yeah, I would be terrible, too. Yeah, but <laughs> it's funny that you say room because I was like, you know, I don't know if everyone, nobody I know really likes kid actors, but then I saw Room, and although he was annoying, that kid actor actually pulled the Have movie together. Have you seen together. Mud? Yeah. Mud's that got, guy was great. Oh, yeah, yeah there's kid some was good kid great. actors. Yeah. There, there's good kid actors out there. Yeah. So, but this, is, this kid is not one of them. This kid yeah. is not one of them, and... It's, and I'm not saying he didn't have a hard job. I'm, he had an extremely difficult job. It I, is. But, he just was straight up but just he's like, bad. yeah, yeah. Just, you know. Natalie Portman is a great actress, but she's bad in Star Wars. So I mean, <laughs> so I maybe they just needed someone who, first of all, looks like Mowgli, and second of all, has to be kind of athletic. He did do a lot of jumping around and yeah. kind of phys- really physical stuff. They should have gotten million uh, Slumdog Millionaire guy. <laughs> he's like he's kind of 28 old. by now, probably. No, he did a CGI him in. I, well, the, my my big thing is like, why do we need a live action kid? Why don't we just CG just, that? Because we yeah, CG'd the, everything the Panthers else. look great. That um, movie was all, gorgeous. All of this movie was filmed in L.A. on a 
soundstage. Like, none of this was actually... It wasn't in the jungle? Yeah, none of this was anywhere. <laughs> what? Yeah. But, because I was wondering that when we were watching it, I'm like, I'm like, wow, that the animals are at, interacting with the grass when they walk. I'm like, oh, that stuff moves the way it's supposed to. I'm like, I'm like oh, that's cool. I'm like, oh, wait, this is all, everything is CG except for the kid. I, th- I thought the CG was pretty good. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous movie. Yeah. This movie is gorgeous. I just was thinking that if you would have shown people at the time the original Jungle Book, just a clip of this movie, I mean, it would have blown uh, your, mind. your mind would be blown. Yeah. <laughs> blown like, their minds. How did they get that bear to move I'll be its curious, mouth? <laughs> yeah, I'll be curious to see how well this ages because it's when not you know be when Sky Captain, <laughs> yeah, like you when movies come out and like they blow your your mind, like as far as how realistic it looks. Like, do you guys remember Jumanji? That um, movie. I couldn't sleep after watching that when I was a kid. <laughs> How old were you? I was 18. <laughs> How many beers did you drink? <laughs> I like we just assume Chris is drunk every time he watches a movie. <laughs> I, I haven't you're heard always, any difference even, so far. Even younger, like he's 12. Yeah, he's probably drunk when he watches <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that movie, like I remember thinking, it's like, oh, wow, like it's not going to get any better than this. Look, look at those animals. They look real. And then, like, you watch it now, and you're like, oh, my God, that is terrible. I yeah. thought that was garbage right, yeah. out, right out of the gate. I couldn't watch anything. Uh, I just wonder, like, in, in 20 years, I'm not going to feel that way about this movie. I'm like, Ugh. Probably. I mean, no, that stuff gets better all the time. Yeah, That's why they keep just, remaking them. They'll make another they'll put, Yeah, they're going to remake dollars. this freaking movie. Especially if, it's, if they don't own the rights. I mean, why not? Yeah. Reboot but, the movie again. Yeah, but to agree with you, the kid... Although it's a harsh criticism because it is a child actor and on a green screen, so he's looking at a puppet. They're <laughs> like, "This is going to be a puma, or, or like a <laughs> like ping pong balls, or yeah, something. Yeah. like, like a, st- a stick with yeah. ping pong balls taped to it." This kid is literally like just straight up acting how you or I would I would imagine would act. He does yeah. a lot of this, yeah, a yeah. lot of waving That's his the, hands around, yeah. and and I didn't really feel any connection between him and Baloo, the Bill Murray character. I mean, it really they kind of went very quickly over that part. Where they became best friends. They really? didn't even show time passing or anything. Uh, I think that worked. They for had me. that you, song montage. Yeah, they had the song montage, and you could tell the passage of time, but by the amount of honey they accumulated in the cave. Oh, that's that was true. A shit ton of honey. Okay, so I'm going to ask a very dumb question: Is this jungle, the Jungle Book? This jungle is just a fictional jungle where all animals? I'm not sure. It's supposed to be an Indian jungle because, you know, everything is. I, I'm pretty sure it's Indian, there's and I'm not sure there's bears in here. I was I was wondering about that myself. I think it's a little bit uh, fictional. I think it's based on an Indian jungle, but then yeah, I don't think there's I and there's a winter. <laughs> well, there's like Aztec pyramids. I don't think those were Aztec. Were I think those Aztec? were I don't know a- ancient. I don't know. All right, okay. to go to go off that part, they gonna... did kind of look Aztec-y, but well, I guess it's sort of fictional. To my dumb self, I thought they were Aztec. Okay, so let me put the mic down. This is. Uh... This is going to be the. Um, this is the Christopher Walken this, song. This is a Christopher Walken song. So this is another of my main criticisms. This movie's <laughs> good as far as the relationship building. I mean, they do a good job with the Puma and stuff like that. But they try and ham, ham fist these move these uh, songs into it, which make no sense. Two yeah, iconic those songs. Those didn't work for me either. All right, so here we go. Just a few seconds. We don't want to. Don't play the ad that comes in front of it. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Okay, so that's my main. How many takes history. do you think that was? Uh, I hope more one. Than one. <laughs> He's like, I'm in and out, guys. Yeah, that, that that's all they could afford. Yeah, the the songs didn't really work for me. I don't either. know why the songs are even like. I think it's just a movie, nostalgia trip. I, I think this movie has tonal problems. Like, like, well, first of all, why remake Jungle Book? Like, why are we making? Just because a- it's 2016 and everything gets a remake. Yeah. So Everything. okay. I mean, so, they had the Huntsman out. <laughs> it's got a sequel yeah. coming out. Everything so okay. So we remake it. It's like let's make it 3D. Let's make it realistic, but with talking animals. Okay. So you have, like, it's more realistic. So we we can make this thing a little bit more darker. Like you know, a little more real. Let's like bring some realism in this. Then you got you keep you keep a couple of songs. I don't know. That to me was weird. I think they should have not had songs in it. 
personally. Yeah, I mean, they're so iconic that that's what people remember, I'm sure, about the Jungle Book, yeah, the Disney movie, yeah. where those two songs. But, I mean, there was a jazz singer, which I'm going to sound very dumb if I try and remember who that is, for the original I Want to Be Like You. And, of course, the, icon- the even more iconic Smash Mouth version of it that came out in the early 2000s. Yeah. Anything <laughs> Smash Mouth does. Yeah, it's clearly iconic, <laughs> it's where Guy Fieri sings Hall the song. Of Hall, of Fame. <laughs> yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, so, I mean, that's... The main thing that kind of draws me back to was that movie. Louis Armstrong that did the original? I'm just taking a shot in the dark. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I think it's him or something like that. I think that makes you guys racist. <laughs> it's that <laughs> other guy that does that voice. <laughs> <laughs> that throaty voice. I don't even know if I've seen Jungle Book, to be honest. I haven't the either. I've character. seen it. It didn't really strike a chord with me. I mean, I don't know. That one and I, like Peter Pan. I, was I want a, a movie like we just saw, but of Tailspin. All the jungle yeah, characters. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Planes. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, live action. <laughs> People getting shot down and stuff. So, I mean, overall, like, I'm, I'm kind of glad. I mean, I'm glad I saw the movie. I'm never gonna watch this thing again. No, and but, there's really, I don't know. It doesn't it climaxes. I was just done by the time they got to the final scene. I was checking my phone and stuff like that. I mean, it's just animals fighting other animals. There's slight, a somewhat of a lesson he learned. But like. um Again, like this thing, like being darker, and like let's make this thing a little more serious. Uh, two animals dying in this movie, and one of them's a bad guy. One of them's so a bad guy. You don't feel bad for it. Yeah, I'm gonna curse so, you right now, Eric. I and, hope someday you have kids that love this movie and make you watch this movie every day for five years straight. It's a weird thing to curse me with. <laughs> a pox upon you. A pox. Uh, I have alcohol, Paul, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it I mean, was if good. Have, if you have kids, you got to drink anyways. <laughs> it was all right. I guess that's the final thing. It's it's good, but I don't know. I feel like it kind of was building up really strongly, and then it kind of rushed. So this movie has like – it's like 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which, which is weird to me. Which is like uh, – basically Rotten Tomatoes is thumbs up, thumbs down rating and then if you go to metacritic i mean this is this is really nerdy if you go to metacritic that's like the average review score so mm. like rotten tomatoes is like yes or no yeah mm. how many people yes yeah. or no and if you go to metacritic it, it's kind of like the average and the average i think is like 75 percent, something like that so that makes that makes that, sense. That, that makes sense so it's like yeah like i can see why people like it but they don't like it a whole All lot. The way yeah, yeah. it's good i mean like i said it really builds relationships in the beginning of the movie and then they kind of i don't know the blue thing didn't really work for me i didn't like that you had such recognizable voices the christopher walken thing was funny but kind of weird um and i thought a little racist yeah (laughs) it was just weird i mean he was doing christopher walken to the nth degree and so it just sounded like like mafia yeah mafia yeah he's true romancing you know the whole thing and just it sounded like him and bill murray in a sound studio and then You know, they kind of rushed to the end. There was kind of a lesson to be learned. Just animals yeah. fighting each other. That was. Yeah, I think I think it's a movie that's like very much of its time. Like, this isn't going to like hold up. This isn't going to be like one of those like Disney movies you harken back to like twenty years from now. No, so not I think, like I think it's very of its time. Inside. That's out what. Or that's what like. like see, I don't know. Like, see, like realistic CG. I think always does that. Which like, is like, more it, about it, just, that. It, just, it just ages poorly. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that's you have that in a bad acting kid, so. Yeah, I don't know. I need to see the Life of Pi and see. I was just going to bring that up. Life, of, you haven't seen I knew, that. Yeah, I didn't see that one either. So. Life of Pi. The the book was really really good. I read the book first, and uh, yeah, the movie was good too. And I mean, and the animation was awesome. Yeah, I read the book because I had to in high school. I didn't see the movie because I was still bitter about being forced to read it. <laughs> don't remember if it was <laughs> they good make you read that in high school now. <laughs> they made me read it in high school, and then it was uh, one of those things where I think I read it, but reluctantly, or I just spark note spark noted it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And just kind of guessed or cheated off the uh, Asian kid next to me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the ma- ma- education system working out great. Yeah. All right. So then, gentlemen, what is the next movie we're going to re- review? Because it's a little while until uh, Avengers comes out. And I imagine we'll do a huge Avengers uh, episode. Yeah, we should definitely do uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Civil War? <laughs> Civil yeah, War. Well, well, I'd imagine. I want to see Winter Soldier. I saw most of have Captain you, America. Yeah, have you, seen, you haven't seen the second one? No. I hear it's good. I, I am I am the only person I have met that liked the first one better. But I, I heard that Kevin Smith on his podcast um, or his sidekick liked that movie a lot more. I saw I saw half of it, and I've heard that the Winter Soldier is like a genre movie. Yeah, I didn't I didn't really care for the second one. I mean, it's 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 okay, but 
Why did you like the first one? I thought it was terrible. What did you like about it? Um, I really liked um, the chick in it. Who's I thought she was, she's oh, a really Johnson. good... Uh, no, she's a really good counterpart to uh, Captain America. She's got a TV show now. Jessica Agent, Jones? Agent Carter? Agent Carter, yeah, uh, that's it. Mm. But uh, she's really good. I, I thought the movie lost a lot of energy when they got rid of her. And like the second one's really silly, and like the way that the last action scene is filmed... I don't know. It's got, it's got weird problems. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it, huh? Looks like we're out of time. We'll figure something out for next time. We didn't talk about Avatar. Nah. Oh. Thank God. <laughs> All right. We'll think of something. We'll post it on Facebook. Follow us there. Listen to us on intertalkradio.com. And we'll talk to you next time. Goodbye. A podcast or radio show on WS Radio is a great way to create content marketing. Turn prospects into customers into raving fans. Contact Wade at wsradio.com or call 866-WS-RADIO. On the Internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5, star, rep, marketing.com. You may have heard me brag about Progressive Medical Center and just how much they've helped me with my health. And Dr. Goley, one thing that you've helped so many people with is migraines. Unfortunately, there are millions and millions of Americans who are suffering with migraines and headaches, and they're debilitating because it affects the quality of their life, and they cannot function properly. At Progressive, we get to the root cause because we understand that migraines could be caused by nutritional deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, believe it or not, delayed food sensitivities. And Ooh. once we determine what the real reason is, we put a plan of action together with medication that we get them off slowly and we put them on an all-natural approach and the results are amazing. Incredible. I mean, there's so many people that can say they don't live their lives with migraines anymore thanks to Progressive Medical Center. And that's what's exciting and rewarding to us as physicians because we help our patients take control of their health and that's why they're living well. Why don't you get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today? Don't live in pain. Don't have migraines anymore. Just go to their website, ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. This is your life. Live it well. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com.